Welcome back to Lighting the Way. I'm your host, Justin Bird. Today we've got a great episode for you. I'm excited to have with me today the Executive Director of the Safe Light Foundation, Miss Yvonne Davila. Yvonne, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Justin. It is my absolute pleasure. I know you're more behind the scenes kind of person, so Absolutely. I'm very excited to, to have you here today with me and be able to uh, interview you with kind of how you got started with the Safe Light Foundation and to talk about the foundation. So welcome to the show. Thank you. So let's just dive right into it. So how did you first get involved in the Safe Light Foundation? Um, what got you started with being involved with becoming the executive director? Well, our wonderful chairperson, mm -hmm. Nikki Zoller, came to me and said, um, I want to start a foundation. And I'm like, oh, okay, great. And she was like, but I want you to run it. And I'm like, I am a marketing and public relations person. I do not know anything about a foundation. She said, oh, I have to believe in you. Make it happen. <laughs> Sounds, sounds like something Nikki would like to do, right? right? Uh -huh. So I locked myself up in the office and put a sign on the, on the door saying, do not disturb for about a month. Mm -hmm. And I started thinking about um, what it is that Nikki does, which is traffic safety. And then I started doing research on traffic safety and the most critical areas with seniors and teens and the research was pretty devastating. Mm -hmm. um, so based on that research, this is why we came up with the programs that we came up with. One was community outreach, where we're out in the community spreading the message on safe driving. So mm -hmm. we support like National Night Out and um, you know officers um, falling in the line of duty. And then with seniors who are the forgotten group in America. And seniors struggle a lot with driving and especially understanding the new technology in cars mm -hmm. um so which is why we came up with seniors matters got it um kind of get them the light shine back on them right and, so. and help them be more independent right got it. so help them not to fear not feel left alone right not feel isolated kind of give them a community amongst themselves Absolutely. and feel supported by people that aren't seniors Mm -hmm. so they can show love and be appreciated. Um, and then the next program, which is one of our biggest programs, mm -hmm. our teen ambassador program. So what was astounding is, is that the research showed that the number one deaths among teens was motor vehicle accidents. Wow. Um, so working with the Secretary of State's office and working with Gift of Hope, where we brought in, so we created this program, mm -hmm. um, and this is our third year in the program. Excellent. And so let's kind of rewind it just a little bit. When you first started the Safe Light Foundation, how hard was it to become non for profit? And, you know, was it, how long did that take for becoming not So it non -for -profit? took me, I think it took me about four months. I'm okay. not sure. But I think the hardest part was me being intimidated, thinking I can't do it. Got I think it. that I had to overcome that. Because this is your first time creating it was my a foundation. First time, and it was my first time you know, working on a 501c3. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that probably was the biggest fear that I had. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the application, I just answered the questions. Um, and then I worked with our attorneys so that they could make sure that I was, you know, in compliance with everything that I was writing up to do. Got it. And so once that occurred, then you thought, all right, let's focus on creating the Senior Matters program. Let's get the Teen Ambassador program up and running. It's now the third year. How has the process been with creating the Teen Ambassador program, finding the students? How do you find the students each, each year? So all of the programs for me are mm -hmm. just, you know, very humbling all of the programs. So the fact that we're able to do this and mm -hmm. the fact that this was created by us, because you were involved in that as well, so you worked with me on all of that. Yep. So let's just give credit where credit is due. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, so all of it is humbling to see something that you create or mm -hmm. something that you're thinking actually come to life, Absolutely. which is all about public relations and marketing anyhow, mm -hmm. right? So for me as a creative person, I always see the finished product. And to me, you know, the challenges is to getting to what I see at the end picture and watching all of this grow and watching us grow with the programs has been very, very humbling and rewarding to see. Yeah, I think for me, it was 
great when we first started the Safe Life Foundation. I think our we both had that passion for how can we improve teens, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why we I think we're like let's go for the teen ambassador program because let's save help save their lives, right? Mm -hmm. So I completely agree with you how humbling of an experience it is because even if we can change one person's life, you know, of course we want to reach as many lives as we can, but if we can affect, you know, people on the decisions they make and teach them how they can learn not to make those bad choices. I mean, anything is possible. And I think working with the teens for me um, is something that I didn't think I can do because I never thought I was a teacher, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I have three children of my own. And at the time when we created this, I think the kids were graduating from high school. One was a junior, one was a senior in high school. Yeah, your kids, um, yeah. So for me, bonding with the students each year i have a new group this year but mm -hmm. the first year was a small group and we bonded and you i learned right so each year you learned what you did wrong what you can make better last year we had about 15 kids and i bonded with most of the kids and wow. i think watching them grow i think watching their excitement about creating something that's mm -hmm. important creating a message that's important that's going to trickle down to their group i think watching that to me is very very rewarding it is something i thought that i would never do and this year correct me if i'm wrong there wasn't there a wait list because of how we have a wait list so that's incredible. So Which we still might three. have some kids from that wait list because what we find is is that in the beginning of the program, mm -hmm. and we are now in the beginning of the new year, um, three absences and you're out. Okay. So some kids don't make it even through the second meeting. So if that's the case, then I can pull somebody in from the wait list, yeah, because, which I've already done. So I've, really? I've pulled somebody in already. Because you just started the third year, and then that runs from the school calendar year, correct? To the end of April. To the end of April. Got mm -hmm. it. So we just started the third year program. And what are you most excited about with the new program? Um, well, this is a good group. I mm -hmm. can tell they're all smart and they're all eager. I had my first meeting with them on Monday. Okay. Um, so what I am excited about is to teach them and to watch them grow. And before you had the first meeting, you had the orientation. That and orientation. Was, and then I think we have some photos from the orientation that we're going to show to our, our audience at home. Um, so the orientation was a, a fun day where the parent you got to meet the parents as you well. You got to meet the parents. So I, they, they were allowed to ask questions. Okay. So we were allowed and then we were telling them, I can't do this without you. So we have, this is a partnership. Got it. And so after the student applies, they get accepted. Do you send them a letter saying, congratulations, you've been accepted. And then you have the orientation date. And so before the orientation, you have not met the students in person. I've not met the students. What we do is we um, read their essays. Okay. So in order for you to apply, you have to have at least a 3.0 average mm -hmm. in school. And you have to write an essay on, you know, why is safe driving important to you? Okay. And we pick the best essays and Got it. what looks on paper as the best group. Awesome. So we from... went through that process. And mm -hmm. then once that process was done, I was able to send a letter out, congratulations. And then awesome. I have a waiting list. Cool. And then you said. meet with them twice a month? Three times a month. Three times a month. Okay. So every other Monday and the first Sunday of the month. Got it. So what was the topic of discussion at your last episode or your last meeting? So the first meeting, which we just had on Monday, mm -hmm. we talk about the importance of understanding why they're here. Right. So why, why did you decide that you wanted to be a part of this program? Mm -hmm. And once we get through that and we break that ice, then we go into the fundamentals of teaching them the importance of creating a message and why they're creating a message. So not everybody understands what's a public service announcement. Mm -hmm. So we break that down for them and help them understand, you know, the importance of basically delivering the message, but making sure that you're grabbing somebody's attention. Um, so we're teaching them the fundamental tools mm -hmm. on how to create a commercial or public service announcement. So that was Monday. Um, so now because October is Teen Driving Awareness Week, so now we'll start going into the creative process. So they all have a homework. Mm -hmm. So we gave them a homework assignment. I love it. Right. So first, first, uh, in the next meeting, they have to come back and they have to tell us, you know, well, what do you think? A public service announcement should be okay so you taught them now they're going to teach you essentially right. so now they're going to teach me okay and so then... it helps me understand where they're at mm -hmm. in the creative process got it 
what they're picking up on, mm -hmm. what do they need maybe some help or some coaching what on. What do they understand? Right, what also. are they grasping? Right. And then with that information, as you mentioned, October is um, teen, driving, teen awareness. driving awareness. Are they going to make public safety announcements mm -hmm. to their peers? Are they going to utilize social media? What's the best way you think they're going to? So in, when they come back in the next meeting, we're yeah. going to review their homework. Okay. And once I get the understanding that they understand what it is that they're supposed to be doing or they understand the assignment then we'll go right into the creative process Got so it. the creative process takes a while mm -hmm. um, so it's very interesting for me because normally I'm in an office and I take my shoes off and then we're writing on a board or whatever so we're doing this via zoom got it so it's a little bit more difficult mm -hmm. in the creative process but we get through it I've managed this is my third time so I've managed to get through that whole thing so they're going to tell us some of the concepts that they think. Okay, what do you think your peers want to hear? Because mm -hmm. I'm not 16 anymore. <laughs> so I don't know what they want to hear. Yeah. So they have to tell me. And they're, you know, they, know their, they know their peers, they know themselves. Okay. So then that's how you start. So no bad idea. No, no idea is a bad idea. Right, just throw it all on the board. So just throw them all mm -hmm. out and let's put it on the table and let's just go through it and see what sticks. Got it. Well, exciting. So we have the new class that just started. Um, you've got a couple things in the, already in the works. Mm -hmm. um, other than, so once we pass October, any other projects that they're going to be working on or getting ready they for? They have several projects that they're going to be working okay. on. It's a whole year of working on projects. So once we pass October, we're going into the holiday month. So what happens on the holiday month? Drinking and driving. Yep. Right, so family parties, family friends parties, parties, friends parties, people so are coming gonna, from college. Right, so we're gonna uh, we're gonna talk about the understanding of being safe during the holidays mm -hmm. and how does that look? What does that look? And we'll create ads. Got it. And these ads will be posted on social media. Got it. So the Safe Light Foundation for our viewers at home. What? Um, ways on social media do we have so we have an instagram we have an instagram we mm -hmm. have a facebook account and we have a tic tac account that we haven't really used yet okay um so we have to we have to really start using that account got it and then it's just for our viewers at home so the safe light foundation can be found on instagram facebook and tic tac mm -hmm. and if they just look for the safe light foundation they'll oh, be well. able to find mm -hmm. that information find it very easily okay great awesome and then in january mm -hmm. is um Teen Driving Awareness Month. Okay. So January is a little tricky because then I start working with them and they have to do town hall meetings in the schools. Got it. So probably by December 1st, I'm mm -hmm. teaching them the importance of town. What is a town hall meeting? What does that consist of? How do you make it work? How do you engage? So we start working on those principles and helping them understand that. And then they go back to their school. They work with their principal and the students and mm -hmm. they actually put on town hall meetings incredible great experience so it's incredible. a lot of work but but they have fun doing it so mm -hmm. that's the best part yeah and they can use their personality to kind of talk to their peers and kind of make a difference mm -hmm. amongst their friends and their their peers at school that's awesome and then once they finish with that then there's a graduation ceremony at the end and eight well, there's a few more things because okay. we have prom coming up that's so right prom is one of the biggest times of the years where teens are drinking and driving and a lot of accidents happen we've lost lots of kids during prom season mm -hmm. so we get ready to put out a prom sort of campaign Got it. prom once the prom campaign is over with then we start preparing for graduation and at graduation we basically give out awards to what i say are the stars of the program Okay, so kind of like an MVP almost. Right, so and we, you get a few who really shine mm -hmm. out and who really take the program to the next level, mm -hmm. and then they get a scholarship for college. Awesome, and then they can still attend you know, future meetings or still help out with... We still have teen ambassadors from last year's who did National Night Out with us. Oh, awesome. Um, so they're still who, involved after they're the They're still involved after afterwards. The Once you're a teen ambassador, always a teen ambassador. We don't lose. Love we're it. family. We stick together. Mm -hmm. And they're very, very much involved in the programs that we're doing, even after they're gone. I awesome. help them with college, so mm -hmm. we help them prepare. We have about six seniors, I think, this year. Um, so I'll write letters of recommendation. Mm -hmm. We helped them. One year we gave a training for financial aid. So I had somebody oh, wow. come in 
to help them uh, with the parents for financial aid. So whatever their needs are to help them get through, we're here to help them. And that's completely outside of just the Safe Life Foundation. That's outside of the Safe Life Foundation. It's just you're a part of our family. We want to see you succeed. Well, I think that's also extending from you, though, because of how awesome of a person you are. Uh, Like, honestly, (laughs) well, I do love you. But, I mean, I think you love the students. And I think when you truly care about someone, you're going to do anything for them. And I think that shines bright on the person that you are and i think as not just me but our Mm -hmm. chairman nikki and our board of directors we're so excited to have this program we really want to see them grow Mm -hmm. and we really want to see them become who they want to be yeah help light the way Mm -hmm. right help light in the way exactly well i'm glad we were able to talk about uh, the teen ambassador program for Mm -hmm. our viewers at home so maybe if they have kids that they think would love to get involved you can always visit our website, which is safelightfoundation.com, which will have teen ambassador information always updated there. We'll also have the application, correct me if I'm wrong, available. So for next year. The application will go on, I think, in March. Okay. So March, March of 2025. Crazy. I feel like we'll already mm-hmm. be there. I know. It's crazy how the year is already ending. But um, give students an opportunity to apply and then we'll uh, be able to have another class starting already fall of 2025 we start recruiting in february all right so february of 2025 awesome so let's kind of talk about senior matters so you mentioned how you saw it with your research data as we all get older seniors almost kind of come out of the light when it comes to being able to drive safe Mm -hmm. and they might feel isolated with being able to get around get to their appointments get to the pharmacy with that research data, what was your biggest area of opportunity did you find? Um, that they're afraid to drive. So Got it. Because they're afraid to drive, particularly in the new car, mm-hmm. we have partnered with AARP. Okay. So AARP gave us a grant a couple of years ago, and we used that much, $10,000, and our chairman matched it for $20,000. Wow. So we use that to create a brand new program, okay. um, a ride share program. Got it. So in some towns, um, we give them a credit card um, and they'll get free lift rides to the oh, doctor, to the dentist, to the grocery store, things like that, mm-hmm. essential rides. And it gives them that independence almost. It gives them the independence. Um, and then in some towns, like on in Richton Park, so we partner with Richton Park Township and they have a transportation system. And that transportation system goes to Country Club Hills, Matson, um, Richton Park, and mm-hmm. I forgot the other town. And what we do is we provide free rides on that transportation system. Incredible. So that way they can have the flexibility. They can have the transportation. They don't have to walk or they don't have to call someone. They don't have to be worried about right. how am I going to get to my doctor's apartment? Mm-hmm. How am I going to do groceries? You don't have to worry about that. We got you covered on that. Incredible. And it's, it is, it's been a huge success. Mm-hmm. So I get lots of compliments from our towns telling us, you know, oh my God, this has been a godsend and mm-hmm. seniors loving the fact that they could just relax and make sure that peace of mind needs our needs. Exactly. Right. Because I think the last thing they want is to be worried about how are they going to get their prescription refilled or how are they going to get to their doctor's appointment to be looked at. Mm-hmm. So that's awesome that they have the opportunity to just reach out to their village mm-hmm. for this ride share program. Um, and so how did you first figure out, you know, how are we going to get involved with the towns? Did you start reaching just out to the village managers? No, I did research Mm because research helps. So what I found was I went to the towns that have the largest senior population. Like Skokie has a large senior population. Morton Grove has a large senior population. Mm -hmm. Um, Madsen has a large senior population. So we went with the large senior populations and then looking at the income various um, so that's what we went with. Got it. So kind of where was the largest demographic of, of elderly senior people? Mm-hmm. And then also where was an area with not as high of an income that would would really appreciate, that and, appreciate and the need program. It. Right. So then we then after that then I reached out to mm-hmm. the towns and then I met with you know the higher the like administrators. The administrators. Um, we talked about the program, and not everybody wanted it. I had a couple of towns that said thank you, but no thanks, and I'm good with that. Mm-hmm. Let's move on to the person that needs it the most. Absolutely, because there are people that need it clearly, mm-hmm. right? 
Right. Awesome. It's so, been a huge success. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else with seniors that you feel that is, you met, mentioned that you partner with AARP. So, so we partner with AARP. So AARP provides actually a training service that helps them understand the new cars, the technology in the new cars, which okay. is really kind of cool. Um, yeah, because technology is always changing. Because when I bought my car, right? I didn't understand my technology. <laughs> <laughs> so Probably needed one of your kids to help right, you pair your phone, your and phone. yeah. So AARP provides that service, so they can actually go out to the town, or mm -hmm. you can um, take a training session on on I think online somewhere. But a lot of seniors don't understand how to use a computer. Makes sense, so, and if you can't understand a computer, chances are the technology within the car is also going to be right. probably maybe scary or frightening for, for an elderly person. So we set it all up where somebody can come out to the towns. Like Richton Park has somebody right now that goes from AARP that goes out and then provides that training. So we make sure that we have the towns in that area participate oh, in awesome. the training. And then when they have senior events mm -hmm. we'll go out and we'll sponsor senior events and we'll sort of push the program and we'll have little gifts for them or things like that got it and so essentially just more support for the senior so mm -hmm. that way they feel comfortable they have some independence on being able to get to where they need to or use the vehicle that they have the issue that we have is that a lot of towns hear about the program and of course want the program in their town but we don't have enough funding so we recently hired um, someone who can raise more money for us so that we can provide service for a, a lot more seniors awesome so you're hoping to kind of expand on your mm -hmm. reach with seniors mm -hmm. Because you have a great connection right now with the teen ambassador, with you know, Gift of Hope, and Gift of Hope is and the Secretary of State's office, mm -hmm. and Donate Life. Donate so Life. So those are right. our sponsors. Sponsors for the teen ambassador program. So helping grab additional or helping attain additional funding for the senior matters, so you can so expand can that expand reach. Their program would be would be great. Well, mm -hmm. if there's anyone at home that would like to help support the Safe Light Foundation, you're more than welcome to visit our website, SafeLightFoundation.com, to help support our reach with the senior matters and press that donate button donate button right there's a donate i button. donate every month so and there's a way that you can set up donations whether it's on a weekly mm -hmm. a quarterly monthly, yearly. monthly. Mm -hmm. so there's lots of ways to help get involved because we really do appreciate the support our seniors mm -hmm. appreciate it um our teens you know they receive scholarships so there's there's lots of ways to get involved and to help our foundation so if interested please visit our website for more information well yvonne as we wrap up the episode again i can't thank you enough for <laughs> taking time out of your day and being in front of the camera because you do so much behind the camera that i don't think people realize how big of an impact that you've had on the Safe Life Foundation, how much I took one for the team. You definitely did. I mean, you've <laughs> impacted my life completely, which I can't thank you enough for. I can only imagine the impact that you're making with these teens each and every year because you are truly an incredible person. So Aww. I thank you for that. Um, and I'm just blessed that I have you in my life and I know these teens will also feel the way this way if they don't already. So I just want to make sure that we continue to make a difference. So that's important, especially in the world that we live in. So mm -hmm. there is some good things going on. There are some good things. And I, I definitely think the Safe Life Foundation, having you as the executive director is not good. It's incredible. So thank you. Of course. So is there anything else you'd you like to say? to say that? Oh, me. stop it. <laughs> no. The, I volunteer my time for this, so. <laughs> but um, is there anything else that you'd like to share with well, us? I think Be we covered it all. I'm really excited about it. Excited about it? Awesome. We're going to have a really good year. It's going to be a great year. You know, I'm excited to see what happens with the third Teen Ambassador program. So, again, if you have any teens that would like to get involved in our program, keep an eye out for February of 2025 for the application. And any seniors that need And help, any they seniors. Can yeah, so you, they can reach out to they us on. Out to us. Is there an email that they can reach out to or is there like Well, a, they can email me or send you a letter. Yvonne Davila at the safelifefoundation.com. Okay, and that information is available mm -hmm. online. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So just note if you're a senior that's in need, please reach out to Yvonne directly and she'll do her best to see how we can get the reach out to yeah. those individuals. Mm -hmm. And again, thank you for taking time out of your day to to watch an episode of Lighting the Way with 
with us. Thank so, you for having me, Justin. Honestly, the the pleasure was all mine. I know this is a very unique uh, unique opportunity for for you being in front <laughs> of the camera. So it was a lot of fun uh, getting to talk with you today about what the Safe Light Foundation does, what you did to get on board, and as you uh, had to dive in two feet in without having any experience. It was experience. crazy, it was crazy but we look, it look where we're at. We have our own TV show right, right now, too. So it's, we made it happen. It was it's pretty, crazy. I think, I think it was all your leadership. Once I saw you on board, I'm like, all right, let's 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 get together and let's let's figure this Good out. Team. So it's been a great, great experience. So, again, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. No, thank you for being with me on the show today. So, um, again, you all take care. Please remember to drink to drive safe and drive right with safe light. So y'all have a great day. Take care.